In this video, we are going to take a look at how data storage and partitions are organized on Android, what Android routing means, and the use of Android Debug Bridge. Then, finally, we are going to cover two types of data acquisition, logical and physical, and how to per uh, practically perform them. Android, like other mobile operating systems, stores data on two locations, the internal flash memory and the external removable micro SD card. The internal flash memory is the main storage location, where, for example, the kernel, system files and applications are stored. The external storage is mainly used to store user data like images, videos and so on, but can also contain user applications. The main internal storage is divided into different partitions. These are the most important. The bootloader partition is where the bootloader, that is responsible for initializing the device and booting the kernel, resides. The bootloader is analog to the BIOS on Intel system. The boot partition stores the kernel and the files necessary to boot the device, while the recovery partition contains the recovery image a minimal Android system used for recovery, backup, and for installing custom ROM. The system partition is where the Android framework and system libraries uh, are stored, while the data partition contains uh, the uh, user applications and all related data. The data partition uh, is where uh, the most relevant data for a forensic investigation are supposed to be found. Standard users on Android are only allowed to access specific directories on the data partition and cannot access the other partitions at all. To be able to access all the partitions and data on an Android device, we must obtain the root permissions. Root is the superuser account and is analog to the one on Linux and Unix systems. This is not a surprise, given that Android is derived from Linux. The procedure that allows um, a normal user to become root is called routing. To root a device, it is normally necessary to unlock the bootloader, because manufacturers generally lock it to prevent users from tampering with the firmware. The procedure to unlock and root a device greatly varies from model to model, so we don't cover it here. A very useful resource is the XDA Developer Forum. In this video, we assume that the device we are going to image is already rooted, and therefore we have full access to its storage. To communicate with, access and control an Android device connected to a USB port of our forensic workstation, a precious command line tool is the Android Debug Bridge, which is part of the Android Software Development Kit that comes pre-installed on Kali Linux. The Android Debug Bridge has many options and allows us, among others, to list the devices connected to our computer, pull and push files from and to the device, execute a shell and install applications on the device. If the device we are connecting is turned on and running, we must enable the USB debugging option for the Android Debug Bridge to work. To do so, uh, we must go uh, on the device uh, in uh, the settings and developer options. We should not image the device when it's turned on, because the Android operating system and the applications are always modifying data when it's running. The most sound forensically method is to boot uh, into the recovery mode. In this way, if the device screen is locked and we can't enable USB debugging, we can overcome this issue and use the Android Debug Bridge the same. 
We have to previously install a custom recovery because uh, Android Debug Bridge doesn't work with stock recovery images. When booted in the recovery mode, the partitions must be mounted uh, in order to assess them. And we can do uh, this by selecting the appropriate entries in the recovery menu with the hardware buttons. There are basically two ways of acquiring data from a mobile device, logically and physically. Logical acquisition involves the copy of all or specific files and directory at the file system level, as we would do when making a backup. Physical acquisition involves copying the device storage bit by bit at a raw level, as we have already seen in the previous video when imaging the hard drive. Now we are going to see both types of acquisition. The first step is to connect uh, the device uh, to an USB port of our forensic workstation and then boot uh, the device into the recovery mode. To communicate and execute the commands on the device, we use, uh, as said before, the Android Debug Bridge. To check if, dev if the device is recognized, we run the command adv devices. The output should look like this, with the device ID and the state as recovery. To spawn a shell on the device, we execute the command adb shell. If the device is rooted, the shell should begin with the symbol hash like this. Since we have root permissions, we could list all the directories on the device. We could list, for example, the contents of the directory data data. This directory stores all the application's data, such as binaries, libraries, databases and settings, each application in its, in its relative directory. Suppose that we are all interested in this directory for our investigation and we would like to copy it on our forensic computer. We could not execute uh, the copy command on this shell because it only works internally on the device storage. So we have to exit uh, this shell with the exit command and return to the, uh, our forensic workstation, to the shell on our workstation. To copy the data slash data directory, we have to execute the adb pull command. We specify the P option to show the copy progress. The first parameter is the location on the device. In our case, data slash data. And the second parameter is a local directory. For example, ranks. We execute the command and all the directories on the device, on the data data uh, directory, are copied to our local directory. When the, the execution is terminated, we can check the contents of our local directory. and see that all the directory on the uh, data slash data have been copied. If you wanted to copy uh, the entire directory tree, we would uh, execute uh, the uh, command with the uh, first parameter uh, slash instead of uh, data slash data.
And so uh, this command would copy uh, the entire directory tree of the device storage. For more information about uh, the Android Debug Bridge and its various options, please, re please refer to the Android Debug Bridge user, uh, official user guide. The limit of logical acquisition is that it misses an allocated and slack storage space, so we would not be able to recover deleted files. To obtain a full dump of all or some partitions, we must perform a physical acquisition. Physical acquisition or imaging involves acquiring both the removable micro SD card and the internal memory. To acquire the uh, SD card, we must remove it uh, from the, the device and connect to the forensic workstation using a write blocking mechanism. Then we can image it with uh, DC3DD in the same way we have seen in the previous video with the hard drive. Imaging the internal memory is trickier because we have to copy and execute DC3DD directly on the device. It couldn't be uh, the standard PC compiled uh, DC3DD. We have to look for a version compiled for the ARM architecture. This is available at this page. We click on download and save the file in the current working directory. We should not copy it uh, on the internal device storage because it would modify it and corrupt possible evidence. Instead, uh, we could insert a clean micro SD card and copy the binary file on it. In our case, when we mount the uh, SD card in the recovery menu, we see that it's mounted under the uh, storage slash SD card one directory. So we, exec we execute the command push dc3dd slash storage slash SD card one. The output shows uh, the transfer rate and the bytes copied. We now spawn a shell on the device with the ADB shell. We have to identify the input for DC3DD to image. Remember that DC3DD doesn't accept directories as input, but block device files. On Android, these device files are associated with partitions. To list all the block device files, we execute the ls div block command. The whole internal flash memory is associated with the mmc block 0 device file and all the files with the same name uh, followed by a P and a number represent the various partitions. To image the entire internal memory, we first move into the storage SD card one directory and then execute the DC3DD tool. Before doing so, we have to remount the SD card to run DC3DD as by default, Android mounts SD cards with no exec option, but doesn't allow to run application from an SD card itself. So we run the following command. And then we can execute this 3 dd We specify as the input file the device file associated with internal memory. That is div block 
MMT. The output image file. The hash option. And the leave file. In some cases, we might only be interested in imaging specific partitions, like, for example, the data partition. To see which partition corresponds to which device, we give a look at the PROC mounts file. As we note, the data partition is associated with this device file. So, if we only, only want to image this partition, we would run the same command as before. But with a different input file. Specifying the one, uh, the device file associated with, with the partition. And the rest of the command is the same as before.